gives them a satisfaction they couldn't get any other way. Hello, my friends. Welcome to this episode of the AI Show Live. My name is Seth Juarez, and I think we're on time. It's 11.01. Uh, let me turn the starting soon banner off. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, it's been two weeks since we've met. A lot has happened. I got this flower shirt. Hopefully, everybody's enjoying it. Someone asked me, incidentally, how do I submit questions or comments because you're i'm pushing to so many channels right now i think it's like 11500 uh just go into those chat areas and uh talk in there uh i am looking if you're on learn tv there's a little chat thing on to the side maybe maybe this side right just chat it. i'm looking at it right here it's right in front of me just right below uh number one also if you're on youtube or anywhere else i get those chat items over here in the comments let me let me show you Hi, Ivana. It's good to see you. Uh, also, uh, uh, Wakas Ali, love the music. Thank you. Like we were back here playing it ourselves. That's not true. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Uh, 
uh, so we can have that back. I I was having a hard time with like what music we should be playing because I kept playing it. Like, and the guests, you'll see, will will tell me about it. We were like, eh. so let me know if you have some things you want. We we can't play everything. Um, so uh, I thought uh, we'd uh, start off the show by talking about what we're gonna do. And I I have here uh, the screen. If I look, it's because I'm looking at the screen. Um, so let's do this. Uh, let's talk about what we're going to do today. If that's okay. Now that we've got the chill music on. And I always like writing it down with my... Remember how I, I buy stuff. Oh, let me move it out of the way. I buy stuff because it's necessary uh, to do streaming. So let's go to the, let's go to the chalkboard here. And uh, Kasim says he has a sh similar shirt. We should all just like find the same shirt and just wear it, you know, in solidarity of no one can see me right now. We should find the same shirt and just wear it in solidarity uh, during the showtime. All right, let's talk about what we're doing today. Um, we have an excellent show for you today. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, let me take that little corner off. No, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave the corner on. So number one here, and most excited about, we're going to be taping an AI show, like one of the official ones. Like this is the unofficial like backstage area. We're glad you're here, by the way. Uh, we're going to be taping an AI show, and I'm going to get the comments over here so I can look at them. Uh, we're going to be taping an AI show on something called Custom Neural Voice. This thing is B-A-N-A-N-A-S, bananas. You're going to love it. Uh, JR saying, what's the name of the tablet? And is there software coupled with it to broadcast to the screen? That's a great question. This is a Wacom tablet. Thank you. Uh, this episode brought to you by Wacom. And my spouse, who lets me buy stuff sometimes. Really nice of them. So, no, basically, it's like a glorified mouse. Uh, so that's what I do. And I, I like writing this down because I want this show to feel not like it's too corporate-y. I mean, look, there is going to be a corporate part, but you're going to get the behind the scenes. JB, I know you're worried about that. Uh, have you seen Hanselman's trick for look through whiteboard with OBS? Alex Schiesel, that's a great question. I did see a tweet of it. I think it was yesterday or the day before, but I just haven't done that. But I mean, how much of my face... Uh, how much of my face can someone take? I mean, especially if I make that face. No one wants to see that. Okay. No one wants to see that. Okay. So number two, uh, by the way, this is going to be awesome. And they have agreed. They have agreed, uh, Sarah and Edward, to stay afterwards and answer any of the questions. But you're going to get to watch us, like, record the thing. And you're going to watch me mostly mess up. It's pretty funny. Uh, and by the way, keep the comments and questions coming uh, during the actual taping of the show. Feel free to put your questions in there. We will not answer them during that time, only because it's, I, what I do is I take this little sliver of the video out, and then we put it on the official places, you know? And so, But afterwards, like I said, they're super awesome people. Edward and Sarah were like, yeah, we'll totally stay and answer any questions, any questions that you have. Okay. All right, number two. I'm trying for my 10-year-old self to not make a joke here. Number two. Number two. We are going to be working on our rock, paper, scissors project. Uh, where we left off last time is we decided that Custom Vision solved our problem uh, but we wanted to see if we could like roll our own solution just so we could see the full, you know, end to end machine learning process. And so, uh, that's what we're doing right now. I'm going to show you today how to pull, how to pull, um, all the images out of custom vision using the SDK. And then we're going to build our own custom model, an artisanal free range model. Organic, I guess is what we call it in the biz, an organic AI model. 
Uh, and so to do that again, number one, we're going to try to uh, pull down some images. Uh, pull down yeah. some images. And then number dos, trying to be international because I know some of y'all are from other places. Numero dos. I'm going to try to train a model. I have one already. Let's see if we can't refactor or just use it. And if you want, I can take as long or as short as you want to explain what is actually happening. I can even, if you wish, get into the maths. In America, we only have one. I know in the UK, you have a lot more maths. Uh, so, uh, again, I don't know what the extra math is in the UK. If someone in the chat can help me out, that would be awesome. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is the number two part. Uh, now this one we could take longer, shorter, because I feel like let me let me go to green. I feel like this is the part that seems the most mysterious. But once you see it, you'll be like, wait, is that it? It's like the first time you went to Disneyland, and you're like, is this it? Yeah. So we're going to Disneyland AI style uh, today. So these are the two. These are the two things we're going to do today. We're still looking to introduce segments on what did you make? I'd love for you to ping me and say, hey, I made this thing. Um, and we can showcase it. Uh, uh, so, yes. Uh, let me know if you built the thing. By the way, if you're hearing my ping from, I got to turn Teams off. Keeps pinging. Thank you for telling me. Boom. Now no one can ever reach me. Except through YouTube comments or Learn TV comments or wherever you're watching. But yeah, I feel like this is more like a like a like a Disneyland thing. Once you get there and you've ridden the rides, it's like I get it. So that's the the second thing we're going to do. Uh, but again, we're still looking for segments on, are, is there stuff that you've built? Are there are there machine learning projects that open source libraries that you like? And we're going to start to intersperse those a little bit into the show. So I'm pretty excited about that. But I think without further ado, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. And now you can see I have some guests here with me. Let me unmute them. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Edward. Hello. Hey, Seth. You can hear me, right? Yeah, they're like, yeah, <laughs> I've been hearing you this whole time. <laughs> is this what the show is? So let's, I think we need to get to the most important and pressing matter. As I was sorting through the music, y'all had some strong opinions about that, right? <laughs> 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 they're like <laughs> hard to know what it was exactly it's like we were traveling but i don't know where yeah, yeah um i i feel like a lot of people said that this is really what the show is all about like they show up but we don't know where we're really going <laughs> all right so uh you all are fantastic for being here thank you so much uh for coming uh, we're going to be talking about custom neural voice, and so we're going to have to get all corporate -y here for a second. So let me get ready. Uh, so the way it works, my friends, if you could, these are the instructions. Just look straight ahead of the camera. Okay. Uh, we try to do it all in one take, if possible. Uh, if, if like if there's like a huge mistake, like you know, I don't know. Edward, your TikTok feed goes off or something, or I don't know, Sarah, you know, your, your dog starts barking. It just, we can all just have a giggle and then be like, all right, we'll, we'll cut that part out. Uh, and then what is, what's the other tip that I always give? Uh, if you run out of things to say, stop talking. Uh, you've probably seen that I, I can get it. Covered. Oh, and I got a new microphone. Did I tell you, you, you two, I got a new microphone. Huh? Hey. Look, Edward's going to be pretty much unimpressed with anything I do, and you're going to see this in a second because the stuff he's built is ridiculously cool. So get your get your questions going. I know the comments are here. They're coming through. Uh, we'll get to them. Uh, but the way it works, uh, now I'm going to have to get serious because i got to make sure i got everything playing the right way. 
So I think it's overlay number five. No. One, one, two, three, four, four. That's it. That's it. I did it right. I did it right. And are you all are you all wearing earphone headphones? You should try to be headphones. I'm not. I might hear myself with you guys. Can you in the chat? Can you guys hear hear like an echo? Or is it just me? I'm not hearing an echo. Okay, cool. It's just it's just my other voices that are normally in there. Okay. All right. All right, so we're gonna get straightened up. Uh, let me get my, uh, let's get your, your screen shared if you can, Edward. Oh, okay. And let's make sure that we can get to it. Your screen. And I have to pick the right screen, share audio, share. Yeah. Oh man, sharing audio is a spoiler alert. Oh, yep. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can get it in there. Add to stream. There it is. Okay, oh. and then make sure hey. to hide the. Uh, yeah, I said I was going to do that. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let me do this. Let me take off the corner bit right here. Let's go to the three shot here. Let me get the comments open here. Okay. So it's going to work, and I'm going to be like, uh, we're going to do what's called the promotional video first. And then we're going to cut to the, the, it's called the bumper. And then I'll like kind of repeat. And then we'll get into like, hello, and welcome to this episode of the AI show. Where we're going to talk about custom neural voice. Uh, we've got two guests, Sarah and Edward. Why don't you introduce yourself? We'll start with you, Sarah. And then, we, you know, this is the regular spiel. And then um, there's some questions that I've worked up. I sent them to you so you could yeah. review. Um, and then we'll do a demo. And then we do a demo. Okay. And you're all ready for that? They, yeah. they made me do stuff for this family uh, that is watching. They made me do stuff for this demo. I had to like do stuff, and I'm I'm excited to see like what came of it. Like I had to sign away my rights. It's pretty scary. All right, uh, are we, everybody ready? Okay, uh, let me just double check to make sure what the what the uh, one two three number four overlay. Let me double. Let me make sure. Four overlay. I did it. I did it. That's it. Four overlay. Did you did you hear it twice or just once? Did y'all hear it just once? Just once. Okay. Just me. I'm the one with the voices in my head. All right. Overlay number four. I think we are ready to go. All right. Okay. Here we go. Should I should I do a should I do this, this style? Maybe this, I can hear like an echo in my head. You heard it twice, Wakas. Like I'm hearing like a strange echo. Huh. There's this kind of squeaky sound that happens. Yeah. Is there anyone else hearing that? Or is that just me? I I hear a squeaky sound. And everybody knows that my voice is only squeaky when I'm tired. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Uh, okay, they heard it twice. No echo. Uh, there is a slight squeak from JR. Uh, Ivana says no echo. Uh, I hear the echo, Seth. Hmm. <laughs> it's very mysterious. Maybe coming from sharing audio. Oh, maybe. All right, well. Can confirm on stream it was twice from Daniel Olivares. We're just gonna have to edit that out. You know, they said I only had like 20 minutes with you all, and I've already taken up like 16 of them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to go fast. Well, we'll just speed it up. All right. So I'll just have to fix those. By the way, Microsoft developer that's watching, can we fix this in post? Let's see what they say. I'm waiting. Like, I'm, like, what are they gonna say? Yeah, I hear like. I, I feel like it's our ancestors talking to us or something. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Yeah, that definitely just happened now. What is that? 
<laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Uh, JR says maybe coming from sharing audio. Why don't I mute your, your screen audio? All right, let's try now. Okay, I don't hear it. You oh, hear it? wow. Maybe that's the reason, huh? Oh, I still hear it. Oh. This is probably the greatest live stream anyone has ever watched. <laughs> now. I can't it's tell if I'm imagining it now or if it's yeah, actually but, happening. They're telling me to mute the speakers. Okay. Okay, now it's just me. No, just the normal voices in my head. No other ones. I hate to break it to you, Sarah or Edward. And I, I didn't want to tell you this in front of all these people, but I think your houses are haunted. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know it's, let me do, let me do this again. I, I think your houses are haunted. <laughs> okay, okay, we gotta get serious. Like we gotta pay the bills now. Okay, okay, here we go. There's gonna be a little bit of squeak. When it comes time to uh, share audio on your on your device, I will unmute you. I will unmute you. Okay. Uh, your device, is that okay? All righty, here we go. Time to pay the bills, my friends. Let's do this. Uh, 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 we're on uh, one, two, one, two, three, four on the bumper. Okay, here we go. Uh, overlay number four. You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show where we look at custom neural voice, an amazing feature that makes it so that your machine can read stuff in whatever voice you like. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show. Where we're talking about custom neural voice, an amazing new feature that recently GA'd with two of my friends, Sarah Bird and Edward Un. I thought uh, maybe we'd get a little introduction. Let's start with you, Sarah. Hi, thanks for having me on the show. I lead responsible AI in the cognitive services, which means I help our cognitive services be developed responsibly and enable our customers to use them responsibly. Fantastic, Edward. Hey, Seth. My name is Edward, and I'm a program manager for text-to-speech at Microsoft. I work with the product developers in uh, developing text-to-speech and custom new voice. And I also work with a lot of the key customers in implementing this technology. Awesome. So let's start with the regular neural voice, because I've seen a pattern in cognitive services where we have models and then we have the custom of that model like for example we have uh, computer vision and then we have custom vision we have speech and then we have custom speech tell us about custom we have neural voice and custom neural voice let's start with what neural voice is uh, sure. everything else about that. yeah so text-to-speech is the technology that takes text as an input and generate audio or speech and for a long time people consider text-to-speech is robotic um, except in recent in recent years that uh, we actually have breakthrough in technology uh, where we can have the neural TTS that sounds very natural, almost human-like. And so is, if I'm understanding this right, it's basically the situation where you give it text and the computer reads it, but right. in a human-like way. Is that right? Right. And now what are the use cases for this? Like, why would people want to do this? Well, so with, tech, with, custom, uh, with text to speech, we actually have the capability to provide, uh, you know, for, for, for our developers, a way to get the applications to speak in a natural uh, way to the users. And um, so they have used uh, it for, uh, let's say, smart assistant, they have used it to uh, read articles or any, any contents, uh, there are, there are, there are uh, applications that make use of our text-to-speech to, -speech to uh, let's say, on language training. And uh, I'll, currently, uh, you mentioned that the, the 
uh, neural TTS, we actually have a number of neural TTS voices already pre-built. So anyone can use it to add voices to the application today. We have, we have 129 neural voices today, over 54 locales. And that's really cool because I'm, I'm trying to think of use case. I'm, I'm the kind of guy that like I love seeing new technology and, and, and using it. But just from the perspective of accessibility of like someone made fun of me this morning because I they saw my email and my font is like super big. Imagine if it was read to me in a human like way. Uh, that's really cool. So let's let's move on to custom neural voice because I understand neural voice. But let's talk about custom neural voice and what the difference is. Well, yeah. So I was going to I was going to talk about this uh, difference between traditional TTS and oh, TTS. Yeah. That, that's right. Because <laughs> like I keep I keep forgetting that we've had text to speech for a while, and then we're talking about neural TTS. Let's let's take a look at. It. Let me unmute your screen. Well, so traditional TTS, uh, it's it usually takes about uh, you know uh, over ten thousand utterance in the training data to create a model. And even so, sometimes it's still not, not fluent. And if you have anything less than that, it will sound quite robotic. However, with neural TTS, now that we have the um, uh, uh, technology provided by deep, deep learning and neural network, and also we collect a lot of the uh, recordings from a lot of speakers, now we can create a model that as little as 300, with as little as 300 lines to create a model that sounds very natural. And for production, we usually just recommend 2,000 lines. So it's just like one-tenth of the time it takes to build a model nowadays. So by lines, you mean you mean like, like I have to read something? Is that is that what yes. we're talking about? Yes. Okay. So I, I'd love to I'd love to understand a little bit about because I, I know it is there a difference between like what's the difference between like regular text to speech? And neural text, and like, like it's like you're, you're reading my mind here. You have a slide. Can we see the difference? Yes. See. Let me play some samples. So first, I'm going to play you the traditional TTS. I live at Ninth Avenue and Twentieth Street, three blocks away from where I work. Definitely a robot. Yeah. Now, let me play the human's human voice. I live at Ninth Avenue and Twentieth Street, three blocks away from where I work. That's okay. a human. No. <laughs> And now let's play the neural TTS. I live at 9th Avenue and 20th Street, three blocks away from where I work. I I gotta I gotta say the human sounded more like a robot than the oh. actual robot. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. I mean, that's that's bananas. And that like people can sign up for this now and just do this, right? Yes. And I uh, that's that's pretty cool. Now now I'm trying to like for me, Edward. I'm trying to understand the difference between regular TTS, neural text to speech, and then custom neural text to speech. Can you sort of lay those out for us and what the differences are? Sure. Yeah. So I just talked about the uh, you know regular TTS and neural TTS. You know, one that takes a lot uh, using the traditional method and needs a lot more training data, uh, and it still sounds robotic. With neural TTS. Uh, with deep neural network, we can actually make it uh, sound much more natural without a lot of training data because we already collect a lot of training data from many different speakers. And custom neural voice, which we're gonna, we are getting into now, is uh, using the same neural TTS technology. Now we can create a voice that is unique, uh, you know, for your applications, for your brand, and it will align with your uh, users' uh, needs and your use case. And so you can create a voice that is 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 unique that uh, can bring out the the brand. So I let me let me let me see if I understand. So regular TTS robots, neural TTS. We train it. Sarah's like sounds like a human. She, she, she's like we're getting into the ethics of this soon, Seth. Don't you worry. <laughs> neural TTS is sounds a lot more human esque, and custom neural voice allows you to create like actual voices is, is that am i getting this right yeah you you can say that um well so when we when we build our pre-built voice in neural tts we we are we are select, selecting a voice actor and we record it and then we build a voice that we think that can use in general for 
uh, you know, uh, any applications. But for custom neural voice, now you can design your persona, the kind of voice you want, and maybe just your own voice. But let's say you want to have a brand and you have a branded voice that, that fits to your brand, then you can select the voice talent that really meets you uh, what you want. And then you can, you can create your own voice. I feel like we need to see this now in action because like I, I, I'm starting to understand the concepts, but I feel like if I see how this works and, and how this goes on, maybe I'll get a better sense for what, what it yeah. is. But before I do that, I, I want to mention that um, some examples of some of our customers already using this custom Ooh. voice. Um, we, we, we are now in GA, but we have to actually have been around uh, in public preview for over a year. So companies like the BBC, Progressive Insurance, um, Duolingo, at and Warner Media, they have been using our technology to create their brand of voice. That's cool. That's cool. So this is actually something that people are are using. Okay. So this is now some examples. Right. So these are some samples that I want to demonstrate. And uh, so let's just take a, let's say I want to have a female voice. So I have a recording of a voice actor. Four walls is so good, laughing out loud. Okay, so let's sound what it sounds like in new TTS. Is version three the JPEG version? That would be fantastic. What do you think? That's cool. Like I can't tell the difference. Now let's let's say I want to create a voice to. Uh, not sure you you like cricket, but one of my colleagues is he's actually. Uh, cricket fan, and he wants to build a voice that can do a commentator of cricket. So that's what the recording sounds like. Jay Boomer to M. Steinis, no run, swing and a miss. Steinis swings at the off cutter from Boomer, but fails to get any connection with the band. So now this is what the new TTS sounds like, or custom new TTS. S. Broad to Mustard edged. Good ball by Broad outside off. Mustard has a go at it and ends up edging it to the second slip. Where the ball just falls short of root. I did not understand both equally, which was <laughs> awesome. I don't know anything about cricket. I'm not the most sporty of people, but that's that's kind of cool. I really could not tell the difference. So how are these made? Well, uh, in order to make it, you we you go to our speech portal. And uh, on, on our on our custom speech portal, mm -hmm. and um, so I think this part is for Sarah. <laughs> oh, oh, man, did I mess this up? <laughs> I like that if you asked how it's made, and we both just stare. We have no idea how it's made. <laughs> I messed this up. Stare back at you. Hold on, edit point. People are talking about this. Let's see what they're saying. Uh, oh. I'm freezing. Okay. Oh yeah, we got to cut that off. Wow. Omg. Cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is cool. All right. This is a good edit point. So uh, that's right. Uh, we were going to do like, I thought we were going to do the demo first, but yeah, I messed up. Let's just go with the demo. I don't think we need this slide. Should we just do it? Okay. So, well, I thought you want you want to go first. I mean, yeah, just, ask, just ask first. me, but I don't need a slide. I feel like, I feel like this, let's leave a slide up because it'll make it easier to edit in the, in the back end. Uh, so uh, let's move your mouse out of the way, Edward. Uh, and I'll, I'll ask a question and come out of this slide, okay, uh, Sarah? Okay. Okay. So, Sarah, this is this is really cool, but I feel like there's there's some ethical things around this because it seems like you can literally train a voice to sound like somebody, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, we didn't have to worry as much when it was that robotic sounding voice, but as you were saying, you can't tell the difference in some cases, and so. Uh, that makes the technology very different and there's uh, more that we need to consider, right? And so we have to consider both how do we protect the, the people whose voices are being represented, right? I don't want a custom neural voice saying something that I wouldn't say uh, and sounding like me. And then we need to also think about the listeners, right? And make sure that the listeners who are hearing the voice understand that it's a synthetic voice, that they're not being made to, you know, believe something that it is a person actually talking, saying something they might never say. And so when we set out to design the technology from the beginning, we started with 
a harms modeling exercise to think about all of these different considerations. And then we've designed a series of technical mitigations, contractual mitigations, and, um, and requirements for using the service into that to ensure that the service is used responsibly for all of these exciting magical experiences that Edward was talking about, but making sure that we're not having this be used to impersonate people, to uh, you know, confuse people, spread misinformation, things like that. So I think if Edward goes to a demo, we can show how with the GA, we've added new technical features for this as well, which are pretty cool. So I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at your screen here, Edward. Do you want to get into uh, what we're going to be looking at? Sure. Yeah, I was going to show you how if you were going to build a model, what what are the steps that you need to take? Let's so do it. I mentioned that you uh, need to go to the speech portal. So this is the landing page for custom new voice, and so and you, the first thing you would do is uh, well you should sign in as in Azure, and then you create your speech resource. Uh, if you haven't done it already, then you will go to our uh, speech studio and and you see here that there is the text to speech and uh, there's custom voice and audio content creation. So you go to custom voice. Uh, so so here here's uh, the place where uh, you will first start to uh, create a project and you, you name the project, you select the agenda, and in custom new voice, you have a number of different, uh, we have a number of different locales that we are supported in GA now, uh, 13 of those right now, and there will be more adding. So once you create that, so I already have created a project that I was gonna demo, and it is the Seth demo. Uh-oh, now, now I'm getting a sense for what's happening here. Well, you remember that you were recording some lines uh, yes. for the model, right? So, yes, uh, so this is the step that uh, the first step you do is you do the recording, and and the things you, once you have done your recording, so the recordings will be in the form of uh, lines. Remember, I mentioned about lines. So these are a number of lines, and with the corresponding uh, 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 transcript. So let's just play one. Our sensibilities are conditioned by our history. Sounds familiar? Yeah, that was me. I remember reading those things because I did this for a demo uh, early, and I remember reading these things, and I was like, "What am I reading? This is weird." So, so this is how we built um, a model. And so, once you have the recording, then you would uh, you would upload it. So, in in our case, we have individual utterance and matching script. So, this will be the choice. But there will be cases where you might not have a transcript or you have a very long audio and a transcript. Uh, but the best quality we recommend is individual sent sentences with the matching transcript. So- We wanna make sure we made a really good voice of you. Right. And yeah. so, so you just upload and and we, I have previously already uploaded because it some, some time, takes some time to upload because of the uh, network bandwidth. So once you upload and you, like Sarah said, you want to make sure the quality is good, and so we have this dashboard uh, to look at, you know, the voices, the recording that you have uploaded, and make sure that uh, so it will check your pronunciation, uh, the signal to noise ratio. It looks like you have a pretty good recording studio that you've used to record in your mic. This is the new microphone that I was telling yeah. everybody about. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you even have a number that has fifty, so it's very good. And then duration, uh, each sentence should be, uh, it's not too bad, uh, you're actually pretty good. So so now now uh, you are satisfied with the, the, let's say you are satisfied with all the training data and you wanna build, but, but there's still one more step that you need to do is to create a voice talent profile. So this is the part where we will ask our voice talent or voice actor to make sure that they uh, consents have aware that the voice is being trained. And we asked you, Seth, and you said, okay. And so are you sure I said, okay? Well, I, I Seth Morris, am aware, aware that recordings, that recordings of, my of my voice will be used, used by Microsoft, Microsoft to create and use a synthetic version of my voice. And yeah, that's the idea down. behind this is we wanna make sure that someone couldn't just upload your recordings without you knowing and make your a voice, right? So this way we know you were involved in the process and you know this voice is being made. 
That's cool. I remember recording that. Uh, and, and I love the ethics behind it because it's not just a, Hey, we secretly recorded you and had someone write stuff down and, and now we're going to, you know, whatever. Yeah. And it's more than just a, um, like, you know, something that we have on the record, we're actually using it and checking it, uh, technically before you train the voice. Right. And so, uh, we use the, um, speech to text to make sure that you're actually saying the right statement. It's not just another, you know, random recording. And then we're using the speaker recognition to uh, validate it, that it's the same as your training data. That's so right. Effectively, you're doing two checks. You're doing to m making sure that I'm saying the right thing and that it's me has the same kind of voice fingerprint. I'm making stuff up here match to the data that's being submitted. Is that right. accurate? And we, and we require customers actually, we have information for voice talents in our, on, you know, in our documentation and we require that uh, customers give that to voice talents. So in addition to you recording, you have the information to understand what you're actually, you know, agreeing to. Uh, from. That's, cool. That's cool. So now we have all the ingredients and so let's train the model. So I'll, I'll just say, I'll train the model. I'll say, uh, Seth and see the the data that we uploaded so i can select all and then this is only 380 lines by the way and we actually recommend at least 300 lines if, if it's be below 300 lines you won't be able to train so you just just we just have barely just uh, barely enough yeah and then uh then we select the neural voice now we we have a pre-built uh set of tests test lines that you can use and uh but you can also add your own test line but we just for this case we just use the one that's that's default um now uh this is the step that i need to choose a voice talent profile so this is the part where sarah mentioned that uh if you don't have it then you won't be able to build so i this is the one that we have uh selected and then i agree to the terms i do I, <laughs> yep and then we can now start uh so this is the we're gonna do self voice these are the training data about 300 lines and the voice talent is Seth, and it estimated about 51 hours to build so we're not gonna wait for 51 hours but uh so i have one that is already made i mean i guess we could but it'd make for a really awkward show so this one i made um again it's 300 18 odd turns and uh it took about 47 hours so when you have this model built and you can go in and remember there's the test number of test data that are, we already uh, are using and so you can just hear let's hear what it sounds like the model sure what should the email say <laughs> same booming yeah. voice so that's the computer. Right, I can find Craig in your contacts. Oh, sorry. I didn't even know who was talking at that moment, Edward, <laughs> for that. So basically, that's the computer generated utterance that I uttered to see if it matches. Yes. Sorry, I couldn't find Greg in your contacts. Yes, I love eating pepperoni pizza. <laughs> did you read all of these sentences? I did. I, and it was like, oh, well, these are test sets. You didn't, actually didn't read that. This is our test sets. I didn't read this. No. So, so now, uh, now the model is trained, right? So, and we are happy. Then we can deploy to an endpoint, right? So, so right now, up to this point, we have we have trained the model. We have tested the model. We can see what it sounds like, and we are happy. Now we deploy to the endpoint so that you can actually use it uh, in Azure. Again, it's very simple. Just hit the deploy button. You select the model. It will deploy. And this one is already deployed. So once it's deployed, I can click here, and you can see the uh, the key, the URL that can you can in integrate into your application. You even provide some sample codes that you can actually use it. Um, you can check it right right here now on on your on your endpoints, or you can go to the audio content creation tool, uh, where. I can just um, type something, whatever. Hello. Yep. 
people watching across the world are like, Edward, please write something funny for once so Seth can say it. He's writing oh. something responsible. Oh, so let's just try one first. Hello, this is Seth, a synthetic voice created by Microsoft. So this is another important part of the story, which is uh, we don't want people to you know, think that the synthetic voice is real. And so uh, customers you know, who are using the voice need to use it in such a way that it's clear, whether that's like explicitly disclosing it or if, if it's a fictional voice, it could be obvious, right? Um, most people don't think that Bugs Bunny is real. And so uh, that's one of the things we're looking for when customers apply to use the services to make sure that it's going to be clear that it's a synthetic voice to the listeners. I, I love the knowledge that you're dropping on like, look, you, we need to be responsible and say this is synthetic, number one. And number two, the fact that Bugs Bunny isn't real is a shock to many of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry well, I ruined it for you. <laughs> and, and so now, for example, like let's just say I'm a famous author one day posthumously. I could ostensibly, I could, in theory, have this model generate like a reading of a book, for example, if I'm if I'm a voice talent, or if like for example, you you mentioned there was other use cases that that people were doing. It was Progressive one of them, if I remember right. Yes, Progressive Insurance. Flow. So, uh, right? yeah. We all yes. know Flow. Now you oh. can talk to Synthetic Flow as a chatbot. And that's and and that's the other situation that I didn't consider either. This notion of a of a chatbot that can communicate with a human esque esque voice. This is amazing. Um, so, Sarah, I want you to have a sort of just ground this a little bit into like, okay, what are the salient ethical points that people need to think about when they're doing this? Who has access to this technology? And like, is there a way to to use it? Can someone just anybody sign up, uh, Sarah? Yeah, so the service is GA, which means you know, we'll deploy it to all of the different Azure regions, but it's limited access, meaning that people need to apply to use the service, right? We want to make sure that they're using it in a use case that's appropriate, right? That um, it's going to have all those great magical educational effects in you know, entertainment, but uh, not cause any sort of potential harm or you know, misinformation. And we're also looking for some of those other things we talked about, making sure that uh, you have consent from the voice talent, you've disclosed that you're you know, making a neural voice and they understand that that's happening, uh, as well as disclosing to users in the application, you know, to listeners that the voice is synthetic, right? And so we're looking for all of the, the combination of these different things uh, before we allow people to, to train their voice. Is there like some absolute no-no's? do not use this technology for? Is there stuff like that, Sarah? Yeah, we don't allow it to be used by um, politicians, for example. And uh, obviously <laughs> there, there could be great use cases with politicians, but uh, there's a lot of cases that um, could be riskier. And so we've decided for that, this technology that we don't allow it to be used for that use case, for example. Got it, this is helpful. So Edward, just to finish up, where can people go to find out more? Yeah, so there are uh, a, a number of places that you can do. Uh, so there's uh, here you can see the the links on I put them on the screen, and uh, so there's the link for responsible AI. This is the next one is the custom new voice landing page. That's the first thing you can do, and uh, to learn more about the limited access, there's a link there, and yeah, and then finally, if you're ready to go, you can apply. Uh, you you can go and we'll fill up the applications. And can I give a shout out for the documentation? The documentation. Absolutely. I can't imagine ever having done this in the past, but the documentation is actually amazing. There's lots of information about how the technology works, uh, how we built it, ways that you can use it more effectively, as well as all of the different um, ethics considerations we talked about. Well, this has been absolutely amazing. Um, thank you so much for spending some time with us, Edward and Sarah. Uh, we've been learning all about custom neural voice now in GA here on the AI show. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care. Oh, that was a dude. <laughs> Oh my goodness, there was one edit point. Did y'all, there was one edit point. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, my God. Doing that for yeah. oh my gosh that was awesome y'all are the best how long did that take that took a little bit longer than we thought but it was a good one it was a good one and now just to hear a little a little slide here uh, for those that are watching live, Edward, you have kind of a, there's like an AMA with the product team. Is that right? Tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah. We love to hear our uh, developers, you know, how they use our services. Uh, so we have an AMA next, next Tuesday, uh, sorry, next Wednesday, I think it's February 10th, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time. So uh, please uh, come and join us and we can answer any question you might have on custom new voice. All right, so for those in the audience uh, that are watching, I'm opening all my chats up, all 15,000 of them. Looks like there's a, uh, okay. Uh, one new question. If folks want to try talking to Flow, I just ask Google Assistant to talk to Progressive and I can talk to Flow and ask her to tell me a joke. Oh my gosh, that actually works now. Someone just yes. told me that on Learn yes. TV. You can use it on, yeah, on the Assistant, on the, on the, uh the the speaker as well the, the i'm gonna leave that slide up by the way uh, so that's awesome all right so let's get through some of the questions here uh here's a question from ivana can we upload audio of any topic or is it better if we focus on the topic we are going to use the custom voice for yeah so in the in the training i didn't get a chance to mention that you the, the training data needs to be uh a consistent style so make sure that you are. Let's say if it's if it's a if it's a style of a talk show host, then you should keep it uh, the same style. Or if it's a style for a reading a children's story, uh, to keep the same style in the data. Uh, right now, current technology, uh, we built a model that reflect the same uh, reading styles. I see. So when I did all my stuff, I did my radio voice basically, yes. and that's yes. why it worked. But it's not necessarily that the, the the things that you're saying, but it's the way that you're saying it that makes a difference. Is that is that would that be a fair assessment, Edward? Well, yes. Well, it's it's the style. So in the in the training data, you want to have the training data that kind of match your style. So let's say if you want to create a voice to read children's stories, then the the lines should be close to that so that you can you can act in that style. I see. Yeah, because when I read it, I I literally just pretended I was like. Radio, because there's like a commercial version, Seth. Here, let's let's see if I can do a commercial. This episode brought to you by Progressive Insurance. I mean, you see how like that sounds like a like a. Um, I, so I did all of my utterances exactly like that, yeah. and I think it helped because you said there there had to be 300 utterances or, or more. Yeah, but recommended is a thousand, right? For production, we recommend two thousand, but a, a thousand should. Uh, make a pretty good uh, model. So in theory, I did 300 over 2,000. What, what percentage is that? I'm so bad. Three over 20 would be one over <laughs> nine, which is like, I did like 20%. So bad at regular math. Like I'm really good at symbolic integration and differentiation with large, you know, like convolutional net neural network types, but I can't do regular math. Forgive me. But I did like 10, 20% and it still seemed to do a good job. Yeah. It's, this was your cue, Edward, to be like, Seth, it's because you're awesome. <laughs> you're awesome. No, it's too late. <laughs> like, and I thought, like, here, let's get the sad music going here so you can hear, hear this one. I missed it. As you said, Edward's not easily impressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It, it's true. Uh, um, but here, I was supposed to play my sound, uh, effect, but it didn't work. I was just going to play it. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's some more questions. Uh, uh, great show. Seth was able to keep it so stable on those recordings. That boy. Yeah, I was literally. So, <laughs> Ronald. Here, here's a comment from Ronald. You're gonna like this. My client Skynet thinks Seth's voice will suit him just fine. Will suit their purpose. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, because Skynet is indeed genderless. Thank you. Uh, for that uh a great great anything else y'all want to add before uh, i kick you off so i can start doing important work of rock paper scissors i'm just kidding what y'all do is seriously amazing uh, anything else you'd like to add um i think we cover everything and yeah you can go to our portal uh, the landing page to check out our our service 
I love it. Now, by the way, let me put this up because he, he asked me, Edward, go to the AMA, 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific time, February 10th, 2020, brought to you by the AI show. Sorry, I was trying to, trying to be cool. It didn't work out. It was working. All right, you all, y'all are the best. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye, and maybe we'll have you on next time. Okay, so just let us know. Oh, look, Thanks my AI, me. my watch is telling me I, I'm talking to it. I'm not. All right, we'll see you. Take care, my friends. Okay. Right. By the way, everyone else, don't leave. We're still working on our project. Um, thanks to uh, Sarah and uh, Edward, who are absolutely fantastic people. Uh, now it's time for us to get to work. I'm going to turn the music back on. That uh, that was kind of cool. Like, I'm wondering if I should build like a bot, like my inner voice. Uh, Naruto is asking, is it available in every accent? I saw there was language drop downs uh, as well. So that's a good question for Edward next next Wednesday. Um, but I think that was really cool. Like I, I actually wrote a demo, I think it was last year, where I had to train all of, like I had to literally, it was like 10 o'clock at night because whenever you're making demos for shows, it like takes a long time. And it usually has to happen like right as the product is getting built, you know, and it's crazy. Am I shiny? News break. Seth has got a shiny head. Like I need a tissue or something. Oh. Thankfully, I had a paper towel just like hanging out there. I'm going to do this here. I don't want y'all to get blinded from the glare. But anyways, yeah, no, I'm... I, uh, Naruto, that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. I saw the language drop down, and I know my understanding of models is it's basically like converting voice into numbers and then numbers into, uh, you know, projections in this vector space and then vector space into, again, sound. So my guess is, yeah. Oh, all right. I guess it's time to, like, get to work. Um, share my screen here. Which screen? We want to share. Let me open Visual Studio Code and make sure that I'm on the right screen. Not, let's, we want screen number two. File close project. What was I working on before? So we are on screen number dose. Here we are. I'm trying to remember where I did this stuff. Like, like honestly, when I'm when I'm doing these shows, I'm like, like I want to get like into the actual flow of stuff. So like, I want people to be like, oh, this is how Seth really codes. So I don't, I don't even remember what where I left off. Uh, here's that song again. Uh. I think it was CD Rochambo LS. That's right. Code dot. Boom. Okay. Oh, I remember. I remember. I was trying to. Um, let's open this up here. Custom vision dot AI. I remember what I was doing. So y'all remember that. Uh, yes. That's me. Uh, and it's weird. I should like reverse my face. It's looking, it looks like I'm looking at the opposite way of the screen. It's like, let me sit here and relax and watch this opposite side. Oh, no. Where did my code go? Let's see. Here. Where is my rock, paper, scissors? Did it? Is it gone? <gasps> did someone delete my... Here it is. No vision. Uh, custom vision. Let's do this. Let me log out. Sign out. This happened to me one time. Sign off. I am gone. Let me sign in again. And let's see if it comes back. By the way, thanks for all the comments. I love it when we uh, get to talk to our guests. They're fantastic people. Sarah's there. I am. What happened there? That was weird. Did, did everyone else were just like, oh, my goodness. 
Oh, Daniel also had a question. Uh, Olivares, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask it in Spanish because I'm just gonna guess that you speak Spanish. That's totally geocentric of me, by the way. I, I apologize. Would you say that they are likely taking a well-trained large data model for each of those regions and accents and fine-tuning them with your own utterances to make the final product? That's a good question. Um, I know that making machine learning models work well, and again, I'm, this is I am opining here. Um, there is a large amount of transfer learning that happens. Let me bring my microphone up here. There is a large amount of uh, transfer learning that is happening, and my guess is that, yeah, why not? If you're using a deep neural network of any kind, even if it's a sequence model, why not use, you know, uh, some of that? Uh, great question. Okay, uh, rock paper scissors. Okay, so you, I remember now. Basically, what we were doing is we were trying to download. We were trying to download this data uh, because I wanted to train my own artisanal custom model uh because i i think i showed you how this all worked before and so we need to, the custom custom vision uh python that's okay boom google it with bing do, 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 do. here we go turn the music up. yeah I feel like I should be talking about like furniture right now. Here's a quick start to create an image classification project with your brand new sofa set. I don't want to see sharp. We're doing Pita. I'm not sharing my screen. She's like, dude, you're not sharing your screen, you goober. Thank you. There you go. All those jokes, just pretend that you were looking at my screen and now now we can have a good laugh at like how. How exciting those jokes were. All right, so uh, we want to custom vision project. Oh, that's right. I remember I was trying to hide my secrets and I didn't do a good job. And so I actually have to move my screen over here and I have to get the keys because they're, they're all secret. I changed them because, you know, I didn't want anybody to like download all my faces. So uh, give me a second while I put my keys in there. All right, I accidentally leaked them like a goober. So here's my key, control C, control V. Okay. Okay, so now in theory, I should have Let's see where we left off. Remember what, what the heck we did over here. I'll, I'll bring this. I'll bring my uh, this all back over here. So that ah, I just oh my key again. Dummy. I'll have to fix that in post. Gosh dang it! Every time that other guy, I had to tell Edward like he was leaking his keys all over the place. Not a good tip. Not a good thing to do. Don't leak your keys all over the place. Okay, so now that I've messed that up, let's go to the client library, object model. Um, this is for uploading images. Running, cleaning up. Let's go to the reference documentation here. Custom vision. Uh, I think the prediction one is what we want. Let's just let's just dot into things. Uh, trainer dot get tagged images. Okay. All right. So we have the project. So it looks like we kind of started doing this. So let's do this. Let's set a breakpoint here and let's F5 remember. Again, we're trying to download these pictures so I can run my own model and start to train um, start to train my new stuff. So incidentally, for those that are that are joining midway, uh, 
We're building a rock, paper, scissors game. A uh, couple of two shows, two or this is episode three, two or three shows ago, I showed you this whole thing working in custom vision, but we decided we wanted to make our own artisanal free range organic model from scratch. We wanted to scratch every bit that went out, but it's hard for me to generate these pictures. And I have like one, two, three, four, 400 and some odd of them. And so I was just going to download them and then, and then I showed you I had this thing called Food AI that I was going to try to repurpose. Why not use Twitch? I am streaming to Twitch, actually, right now, uh, Glaucia. Great, uh, uh, Glaucia, dear friend of mine. Why not use Twitch? I am streaming to my personal... I'm Look, I'm literally streaming to everything. Like, I'm probably on some billboard in Romania right now because I'm streaming to everything I can. Great question. Okay, so uh, here's the images. Uh, so anyways, um, what I'm doing is I'm downloading these pictures so I can make my own model. Uh, yeah, uh, Jenny Scoo 7 I am indeed in Twitch. I am everywhere. Hold on, hold on, let me make this. Everywhere. And I bought a soundboard, so... I'm dangerous. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank everybody who came today for uh, yeah. that cheer felt a little off. Yeah. They're not in it. We're going to have to talk to this voice talent here. Okay, so anyways, we're downloading these images to make a model, and this is where we got to. Uh, I was using the uh, Custom Vision Python SDK. Yeah, let's, look, let's, not, let's not leak my keys again. Uh, okay. Oh, here's some stuff from the Microsoft developer. We have... We have a multi-language, multi-speaker, universal base model that enables our customers to build a highly natural TTS voice model with 10 times less data, adaptive to new speakers and new styles or characteristics. Yay! Thank you for that, Microsoft developer. It's like my boss is watching. But anyways, here's the images. Looks like it pulls down 50 at a time. But we, so we're gonna have to do this in some kind of while loop. And you know what? I think I wrote this code. I already did this. C dot dot. Aha! Let me move this over just in case I leak keys. Oh, but they're the wrong keys anyways. I changed them since then. Have at it with my bad keys. No, helpers. Oh, here we go. No, that's not it. Oh, no, this is something completely different. What is this? It's not the right thing. Oh, data. Here we go. Download. Here we go. Ah, I knew I did it. Okay. Okay. See, look at this. Okay. 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 Let's just copy my code here. I knew I had done something like this. I'm just going to copy and paste my own code because I'm shameless. Look, look. Copy and paste code from Stack Overflow. I can copy and paste code from my own stuff. Microsoft developer, you never have to apologize for anything. Ever. We love you. And I just like to take this moment to say, you're awesome, Microsoft developer. I couldn't think of a better person. Wow, that, mu that music was real good. Uh, could you create a custom neural voice that is in the style of a New Yorker or Bostonian blended accent? Yes. Like they had a guy sitting there talking about cricket and I didn't even understand it when it was the human talking and I understand uh, misunderstood it exactly the same way um, when it was the robot. It's cool. It's cool, 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 cool. All right, so let's import OS, import OS. 
uh, OS. And it looks like uh, we also need import requests. Boom. Oh, secrets. And then we need directory. I guess this is where we're going to put it. Yes. Uh, where are we going to put it? Uh, so, uh, Naruto custom neural voice is currently available in 13 languages. These include Chinese, Mandarin simplified, English, 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 French. I feel like I should have read like the actual stuff in parentheses. French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Spanish, and Spanish. I'll tell you, Spain Spanish and, and Mexican Spanish are not the same. And I'll tell you why I know this. It's because I lived in both places. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, so it looks like I need a project ID. So let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, it looks like I need SUtil. SUtil. Derf. Import shootil. Okay. So we're getting the keys here. We don't need this anymore. Bap. What I'll do is looks like project ID is def oh, looks like I need a UUID too. Import UUID. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I am going to say something like um, project ID equals doop. Uh, keys, I think it's project ID. And then we'll do endpoint, endpoint equal, equals keys, loop. And then key, uh, B, keys, okay. So now I can I can do something like this. I can get this out of here. Do, 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 do. Yes. Boom. Okay. So we don't we have that. If the directory exists, then remove it. Otherwise, and then make it get the tags, and then make a directory for each of the tags. See that? Like there we go. We're getting the tags from the project ID. And remember, the tags are going to be none, paper, rock, and scissors. Be a foe. Uh, skip. Oh, request. Uh, someone saying something. I heard a boop, boop, boop. Maybe that was just me. Okay. I, I spelled it wrong like a goofball. No, import requests. That's what I thought. What is this? Of course, request is not defined. I don't know what it is. Where is this coming from? Oh, it's this thing. Oh, it's this. What we, this is what we wanted. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. If I do not make those sounds, it does not work. Not going to ruin a good thing that's happened in the last 20 years. Um, okay. So now it looks like what's happening is I get the credentials. I get the trainer. If the directory doesn't exist, um, then it will make it. Well, if it exists, it'll remove it then make it. Then I get all the tags. I make a, a directory for each of the tags. Then I get the tagged images. And then they're all there. Happiness, happiness, happiness. Let's try it. CD.dog. Now we're on the cool music. CD data. LS. Uh, Python. Python download. Minus. Oh wait, did I was I clever? Oh, I wasn't. Let's just let's just do this. Rock, paper, scissors. 
because that C makes total sense in English. Uh, I don't have to pass anything in there, and let's just see what happens. Sammy uh, Deprez, how you doing, buddy? It's good to see you, Sammy. He says, what's the pricing model for custom voice? I do not know the answer to that question. Uh, hopefully some of the links that they provided will have that in there. Um, oh, William Mendoza uh, says you can watch the AT&T video that showcases the Bugs Bunny voice. Also, you get Progressive plus Swiss Com. We also have a demo of the TTS pre-built voices so you can select from over 200 voices across 54 languages. What? Oh, jeez. Honda, activate Torch. I think, yeah, Torch. Oops. So for those not familiar with Python, I, I use Conda environments. Uh, and each Conda environment has its own like special artisanal blend of uh, Python. Here we go. Oh. I need to look at my secrets file. Not this one. Uh, secrets. Oh man, I closed the wrong uh, directory. Uh, CD dot dot code dot. Okay. What? Oh, I remember. I called it endpoint. Remember? And I left it. <laughs> that was like the funniest part of the show last week. I don't know why I didn't remember that. Endpoint. Okay. Here we go. CD data. Boom. Boom, here we go. Here we go. It's happening. It's happening. Let's go in here. Reveal in File Explorer. Yeah, here we go. Nothing in here yet. What about in here? Oh, yeah. Look at this. So basically, I remember what, what past Seth did. Um, basically, past Seth was like, hey, just take the name of the, just get the tagged images, get the name of the tag and stuff it into that directory and name the file like some ping. Daniel is saying, uh, my least favorite part about working in Python is setting up the environment repeatedly for each ML project that I want to examine and reproduce. Yeah. Look, we're going to talk to Guido about that. Uh, I don't know. I It's kind of an interesting, like for me, like there's a, like languages are, are they all have their own personalities because the reality of the matter, I'm going to sit up. This is like, it's like, I'm going to turn the music down. Like they're all made by people. And so inherent in every language, you have the the personality, like the rigidity of a statically typed functional language. Like I know the people that make some of those languages and it's like, ah, you know how, you know how there's like this funny cartoon trope where like, I don't, I don't know what cartoon it was, but like people were walking around with their pets and they had like the same kind of attitude. Programming languages are like pets. I don't even know if that's true, but y'all know what I'm saying. Uh-oh. What happened? It got mad at me. On the URL retrieve. Maybe it's just an existing connection. was forced. Maybe it doesn't like me querying it so much. Well, it's working now. All I needed to do is, uh, all I needed to do is just download stuff. I mean, is it, can it just, just get over itself? And I think, I think I, the other thing I did, because I want to get, I, I only have like 15 minutes. I think, I'm trying to remember, because I, I, like when I was preparing for this show, right? I was like, is this something I could feasibly do and not go down like the, like start swimming in the deep end and get crazy and not have anything work. Yeah, I did do it. Split. 
I'm just going to take past Seth's work because when you're when you're training when you're training AI models, right? You you gotta you gotta split the data, you know. So uh, let's go into. Uh, Oh, let me reveal an explorer here. Data, and let's just, let's just copy it. Let's just make a file. New file. Boom. Uh, so let's see, what does this do? This does a split of 0.8 training data, validation data. It tries to find the, makes the train validation data it finds all the directories in there using os.walk. There's files in that directory. Get the name of the file. Do a random split into either training or validation. Ah, okay. Okay. This to me is like, I'm trying to, I'm like being super clever. So basically, because the random number generator gives you a, a number uniformly at random between zero and one, um, basically what I'm saying is I'm like, give me a random number. If it's less than 0.8, that means that the density of the distribution, right? Like I'm forcing 0.8 to be pushed into the training data and the balance to be pushed into uh, the validation data. I could have said also, uh, if mp.random is less than split, a one minus split, then it would have gone into validation. Otherwise, training. That's pretty cool. Man, past set was awesome. Uh, looks like the raw data. Did this finish? Oh, son of a gun. Why did it stop? Oh, maybe because it was out of things. Let's see. Maybe I didn't do any error checking. So let's see. How many things are in here? Only 33. Okay. How about in here? 58. Okay, maybe it didn't finish. So I had like 100 and some. 63. And then here. 59. Let's just start with this. Like there's enough variation of the data. Maybe I should do like a pause, you know? Maybe I should do a pause. Because that's not a lot. Did I download these before? Let me open that other project here. Okay. CD.op. CD.op. I think it's looping across the same music over there. Let's, let me put some polka on because that's the kind of mood I'm in right now. Oh, there's none to play for polka. Let's go jazz. There we go. What do we got? It's the same thing. I just already did that. Lo-fi. We'll do that. Uh, Ro Chambo. Uh, let's do Explorer dot. Okay. Not this. So yeah, looks like I. Did I download some data already? I did. Oh yeah. Did I split it into training about, oh my goodness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna commit this code because it looks like it does indeed do the right thing. Uh, how, how did I do this in the other place? So it looks like in the data folder, I had raw train and val. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll rename this to raw. Let's see if it runs me. Nice. And then there's training and validation data. Um, that's cool. Okay. So this is the data. What I'll do is I'll just move my data over because I'm done messing around with this other thing and I have 10 minutes to make a model there we go raw no this is row shambo and we want row chambo i remember i was actually trying to get this to work a while back um row chambo booyah data okay boom boom boom
I may have duplicated data, but okay. See, now there's 151 of these. Okay. 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 Cool. Now it's time to do the actual machine learning that now that we have the data. So as you're watching this, uh, let me get my, let me get my handy dandy chalkboard out here to explain like how this, how this works machine learning wise. So basically, um, right down here, uh, let's go with yellow. Oh, white here. Okay. So basically the way it works for machine learning, I'm going to lower the volume here. So it's not so confusing. That way you can see what I'm doing. Basically you have a bunch of data and you pass it into an algorithm that basically loops, uh, right across the data to produce this thing called a model. This model then in theory, you can take it and you can give it like as a function, right? You can give it another picture, which would be of me. And the, the, the function is actually the same thing as the model, right? And then it will tell me rock or paper or scissors. Okay. So what we're doing right now is the way to know if it's doing a good job is we have to take this and we actually have to split it into two, right? We have to split it into training data, which is pictures that we use in this loop and then validation data, which we then use over here to tell us what's the percent of accuracy that we got. That's what's going on. That's the, wow, that percentage sign is horrid. Good grief. So that's what's happening. So as you see me doing this, what's basically the real, what's really, I didn't, I closed it, but what's really happening here is we have the raw data that I downloaded. Well, it broke for some reason. I don't know what, maybe I'm calling it too many times. Um, it broke, uh, but I'm separating, I'm taking the raw data and I'm putting about 80% of the pictures into here and about 20% of the pictures into here so that I could push it into like the machine learning code. So let's, let's write that code right now, or I'm just going to steal it from myself. Uh, I'm going to do source here. I'm just going to copy the files over, you know, there's no shame in this. This is, I wrote this code. I don't feel bad about it. Let's see, uh, Projects, Projectos, Food AI. If you ever see me do like tacos and burritos, um, that's this thing. I'm just going to take all of it. All of it. I don't even know what this thing's do. I don't care. I'm going to put them in here. Show me your glorious code, Seth. Okay, so it looks like this lo downloads pictures from Bing. I don't need this. <sighs> oh, this is more more some fetching with Bing. Uh, get some stuff with Bing. Okay, we don't need that. Here are some helpers. Looks like these I do need. Yeah, these are some things. Scoring for loading the model. This feels a little too hard-coded. I, I bet we can fix that. Looks like something's wrong, but there's helpers there. Hopefully it'll sort itself out. Uh, but yeah, this is the thing we want. So here's the deal. Basically, we get some training data, some training data, and I'm just going to point it to these folders. Oh, let's see if we can point it to the folder. So direct directory to the training and test data. So it looks like it's dot dot data. So train and val. So maybe that'll work. Uh, outputs are, it looks like it's going to make a folder for that. Uh, this is going to be Rochambeau. Rochambeau. And then epochs, etc. Okay. 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 Let's, let's try running it. Let's just try running this as is and see what happens. CD dot dot Rochambeau. Oh, they're telling me, uh, hey, Seth, just a heads up. We are coming up on 90 minutes. Man, it goes by fast. 
Almost done. Here we go. Okay, so let's just try running it and see what happens. Because my like I, I ran this on food, but it's the same style of model. Here we go. Here we go. <coughs> yes. <coughs> okay. Looks like I'm using transfer learning with MobileNet V2. Oh my gosh, is it happening? <gasps> By the way, for those of you looking at this, you're like, what the heck? I'm just going to try to get this to run. I promise a full-throated explanation of all of this. Yes! We're making AI right now. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> that accuracy is horrendous. Oh my gosh. Okay, looks like it it's saving things. Things are happening. Here's some outputs. Let's go, let's reveal an explorer. It's making some models. I'm opening it in Netron, by the way. Yeah, it looks like it's doing its thing. Okay, so next time. I'm going to spend some time talking about this. Uh, let me open up. Let me open up my teams because I want to make sure that I get in. Like for the next show, I want to show y'all what the next show is because they were gonna they were gonna give me um, the uh, image for the next show. I gotta get it in the next. Gotta get it in the next minute. We can do this. Teams, hurry, load up. Let's see. Did they give it to me? Did they give it to me? Uh, okay. Okay. All right, friends. Looks like my time is up. But next time, two weeks, we're going to be looking at uh, responsible AI, how good it is. You're going to love it. Thank you so much for coming, and we'll see you next time. Take care.